Majesties, you remember the program, the Pan African program that was supposed to hold in Ghana that was cancelled by the government, right? I think I brought something of that nature here um, that was cancelled by the the government, all right? That um, it was organized, and we have uh, four Pan Africanists there. We have uh, Priyalo Lumumba there. We have Dr. Arikana. We also have Julius Malema of South Africa, and we have Peter Obi of Nigeria present for that particular convention. And it was cancelled some minutes or some some minutes to the program. It was cancelled, and everybody went out hot. Oh my goodness! Oh, uh, the Ghanaian government, the Ghanaian president, uncalled the cancellation of this Pan African program. A lot of youth went out and were so angry that their government cancelled the program and if you notice i didn't make any comments that day when i put out that video i only put out a video of the youths um giving out their own opinion saying what they feel at that moment but i didn't say anything there was a reason why i didn't say anything and some of you were sending me emails and like oh you didn't say anything and i remember telling some of you that i didn't say anything because something is off with that particular organization something is off with those who are behind that program and i wouldn't want to see we are the verge where everybody is angry and everybody's looking for solution so the enemy can also come in disguise and make you feel like this is the solution and then you run towards because they know people are frustrated they know people are angry they know people are tired so they want to take advantage of the situation of people to keep plundering us so I, I didn't make any statement while I uploaded that video, but I had my own reservation, all right? I wasn't sure of what was going on. Now, something is coming out and people are beginning to see the other side of this whole thing. Yes, the government canceled this, maybe because they felt like um, those who were invited are people that might come and expose them. These are four pillars, like. They are like the four pillars of the continent of Africa in terms of those who are out there to really wake up the youth and uh, really talk to us as the African people. And of course, they might feel like if they allow this program to continue, they did it for their own selfish interest. That's, that, is, that is just a summary. The Ghanaian government cancelled the convention for their own selfish interest. Alright, but they never knew that they are doing something, they are doing a favour to the people as well. Why am I saying it's a favor? Now, don't come here with that emotion. Oh, this is a young guy who wants to liberate people and he organized a convention and invited these people. Now, this was a trap. If you see through this, inviting these people, most of them did not even know who was behind this whole thing. And they came in because of course it's a Pan-African program and it's for the growth of our people. They took advantage of these four people. And organize the program because they know when these four people are present there the whole of africa is there so they wanted to use the popularity and the power of these four people to push on with their plans but the creator knows how to do uh to, to do his things best and see the way it went because the cry of the people is enough all right what am i saying a belgian woman a white belgian woman become spokesperson for a pan-african movement in ghana this was the head of the story and i was captivated i'm like i'm interested in this one i want to go and see lo and behold it became the story of <laughs> the convention in ghana that was cancelled now before i go further i want us to take a look at this but what that guy said that young guy that wants to be the president that everybody are happy for the youth are happy for what he said that got me angry was the last statement that you're going to hear from this video. Now, I got this from, uh, what's his name? His name on YouTube is The Merc. Is it The Merc? Something like that. I'm going to leave it there on the screen, The Merc, so you can go subscribe to his channel as well. He have good content, like he's all in as well. <laughs> we are fighting this thing together. All right. He's also a Pan-Africanist and he's all in for the liberation of the african people you can check him out on youtube the merc the merc t-h-e-m-e-r-c yeah the merc something like that you can check him out 
I'm going to tell you how this Belgian woman is connected to an African presidential candidate, four Pan-African leaders, a cancelled Pan-African convention, and a man in a voodoo mask. Pay attention. Someone sent me an Instagram profile. I thought, okay, another Instagram model with a BBL. What's new? Then he told me she's the spokesperson for a Pan-African political entity in Ghana called the New Force Movement. What? I saw videos of her getting welcome like a dignitary by struggling black African communities, visiting flood-stricken areas while wearing designer clothes and heels. No history of diplomatic endeavor. Just booty shorts, Prada, luxury cars and spa days. But what is this new force movement? For months, their campaign in Ghana depicted a masked man with slogans about change. A major convention was planned with PLO Lumumba of Kenya, Julius Malema of South Africa, Dr. Arikana of Zimbabwe, and Peter Obi of Nigeria. The masked man revealed himself to be real estate tycoon Nana Bediako. He then announced his candidacy for president in the 2024 elections. When asked why he would have a white Belgian woman as the spokesperson for a Pan-African movement, he said he couldn't find a black Ghanaian with the courage to take the position. They were all scared. Wow. Some of the most courageous and outspoken advocates for Pan-Africanism are black women. Black African women. You know what? If you're a black African woman, Ghanaian or otherwise, you're attractive on camera, can speak publicly and are willing to be the spokesperson for a Pan-African movement, post a video response in the comments with the hashtag Black African Queen. Maybe he's right and none of you exist. Oh, and as for the convention, the Ghanaian government cancelled it hours before it was to start. Welcome to Africa 2024. Majesties, did you hear that? So, um, what's his name? He said that there are no, there are no women who want to take the job. In the whole of Ghana, there is no woman, there is no Pan-African who is ready to voice out. Where <laughs> you heard him? They were all scared. All right. So the whole, the whole women in the continent of Africa are scared to come out and talk for their motherland. All right. So they were all scared. So he crossed the, 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 the crossed waters to go get a woman who can serve as a spokesperson. Because in the whole continent, there is no woman who can stand up and serve as a spokesperson. This is the picture of who we are out there before our faces. This is what we do. We bring down our own. We look down on our own. We say our own is not worth it. Our own is not up to that, to that particular level. And then we, we, we go look for something that sometimes is not even up to what we have in the house. And we begin to compare these things. Now we give them, we are the one making them pompous. We are the one giving them that kind of, you know, yes, we can do it. That's why they are running to us. Right? They don't have anybody to do it there. They are women don't know anything. They are all Ill illiterate. They don't know how to speak out in public. This is the picture that Nana is pushing out for people. This is a picture. I, I hope I, I call I hope he's called Nana. Something like that. That there is no woman who could take the job because they were all scared. They are all scared. Come on. Come on. Women have done a lot. Women have contributed a lot, especially to the freedom and to, you know, yeah, of course, the freedom of our people from colonialism. Women have contributed a lot. And then we get this guy who came out and he claims that the reason why he have a white woman as his spokesperson is because women are scared. And he claims this is a pan-African movement. He claims he is ready to come liberate the African people with a white woman behind him. Is this exactly what we're talking about? The, 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 the military leader of Guinea marrying a white woman. Because a lot of people are not having trust in him because he has a white woman as a wife. Now, this is not having a white woman as a wife. This is having a white woman as part of the movement. Come on. So there is no secret. Every decision you make, every decision you make, she makes that decision with you. She carries out first-hand information 
And if she's ready to betray you, it's going to be a disaster. And I believe this guy is smart enough to know this. Now tell me if this guy is not sponsored by the West. Why is he having that white woman behind him and he's protecting her, saying that there were no women to support, there were no women ready to take the job. That's why he went, he crossed waters, crossed continents to go and carry a white woman to follow him behind. Because I don't get it. I don't get it. If she's outspoken, we have African women who are outspoken. If she's um if she, if she's smart, we have African women who are smart and ready for the job. In short, they know they are people very well, so they know how to do the job well. Alright? If she dresses well, we have African women who dress well. If she's beautiful, we have African women who are queens. So <laughs> what is the excuse now? So I felt like when I saw that happening that time, and I get a lot of people becoming so emotional, insulting the government of Ghana that they cancelled the, the Pan-African um, Convention. Like I say, they did that for their selfish interest, but they never knew that they were helping the, they were helping the, the Ghanaians in one way. Because if that convention would have pushed through, he would have succeeded in capturing the heart of a lot of young boys, a lot of young men, a lot of young people. People who go all in to sacrifice their life for him. And then maybe later we'll just discover that there is a white government behind this whole thing. Maybe there is a Belgian government. Imagine, oh, this guy is taking us back to King Leopold's people. <laughs> Is it not the same? <laughs> the, is it not the same Belgian missionaries that Leopold wrote later to that they should deal with us very well? This guy is taking us back to Belgium. <laughs> anyway, it's not funny, but this is like I say, what he portrays shows how we are as a community, as a people. We value other people, we respect other people, we think what comes from outside is better than what we have within. We always welcome our enemy. We always are happy with our enemies. We always we are always captured by our enemies. All right? We are always captured by our enemies. And then there'll be a point they'll tell you, okay, we are gonna support you. He might even be been supported by them already. If not, where do you think he's getting all those months? This guy coming to run for a presidency. If he's not having anything behind coming to run for presidency in Ghana and since he's a youth youths are behind him blindly see this is not a time where we will make more mistakes because many will come this time now to take advantage of the situation many will come this time now to come and lure you into accepting them and then we will to be like we're in a perpetual bondage that there's no freedom we have to open our eyes or shine our eyes it's not everybody that come and say, I am a youth. Hey, I love my countries. I love my continent. I want to be president. I will run after. Enough research have to be done about that person. All right? Enough research have to be done about that person. Why must he have a connection with a Belgian uh, woman? And he want to come and rule people in the... He should go and rule in the in, in Belgium now. Right? He should go and become a president there or maybe a governor of one state. Why is he coming here with someone to, from with a Belgian person to come and to come and rule? And this woman, they goes around, goes around to all those typical villages and as we mumu, our mumu not too much, according to somebody. So people will see her as a white lady with 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 her hair. Now they will be running to her, right? They will be, oh, they've seen a white woman. Why? Remember that white savior complex. This is what they did to us. This is still colonialism. Because Jesus was a white man. Oh, this white woman might be the mother of Jesus. So, oh, salvation have come. And this is how we always push, always push ourselves down. And it's like there is no hope for us. We have to open our eyes. We have to know what is for us. We have to know what is for us. Because I believe strongly that if Pierre Lumumba, Dr. Ericana, um... Malema and Peter Obi knew who was really behind this force, who 
the spokesperson of the person who claim you want to be a president is. I don't think, I don't think our mama Arikana will come out for this program. I don't think so. It's either the right information were not given or they were holding something back so as to get them out for the convention. And they were so smart that day that they hit, they hit this very lady. They didn't bring her up to the camera. I think she was hiding somewhere quietly. What do you think about this white woman being a spokesperson to our African brother who claim he wants to come and liberate Ghana? Leave your thoughts and comment there at the section. And I'll see you in my next one. Until then, love yourself, love others. Stay safe, stay positive. Always your majesties. Bye for now.